So today's project is to take out this awning and all of these windows. And the reason we got to get rid of this awning is because it screams 1974. <laughs> Back in the day when they made mobile homes, everything had an awning to protect from deflecting the harsh UV rays from the sun. This part of the house, however, is in the shade every day, so it's not necessary and it dates the house. So to upgrade our curb appeal, we're gonna rip this out and then we're gonna put in brand new windows and get ourselves that nice new modern vinyl look, right, that has the build out and we're gonna be able to transform the front of this building. All right. Good news, my wife's plan is to get rid of these anyway. <laughs> trying to work on the cardboard as much as I can just to keep out of the mud. I think no matter what I do, I'm gonna be up against the glass on this. Oh, hopefully we don't go busting through. I'm gonna try not to get frustrated today, but this is a crazy place to work. Here's just a little bit of advice for you. Whenever you're doing something new for the first time, do an uninstallation. Take it apart one piece at a time. That'll give you the familiarity that you need for the reinstall. It'll help you understand the construction technology went into building this thing. For me, I've got wing nuts and I've got bolts and hex head screws. Let's see if we can figure this out. So it looks like if we disengage all of these wing nuts, whoop, we should be able to lift this awning up, get access to the screws holding it all together. I would imagine there's like a thousand pieces here, eh? All right, and this is just a facade, snapped in place. See if we can see what's going on. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> uh, all right, well, we are not gonna be able to get up there with that. Uh, sometimes you gotta use a little bit of brute force. Oh, that's just not gonna work. Now, in a case like this, you can use your knife as a screwdriver. Okay, I think we're disengaged now. <laughs> the secret here is to pull this off without falling off the ladder. Now, the reason I'm going through all this trouble is I gotta learn how to disassemble this thing so I can reuse one of these on the new window in the back. There we go. Nice and gentle like. There we are. Whew. All right, so now you can see what we're left with here is a window that gets installed with an edge here that's screwed to the surface of the of the building. We also have this, what looks like a drip cap, right? Everything here works backwards. So we're installing layer over layer and then using adhesives and putty and caulking in order to keep the water out. So we're relying on chemistry instead of physics. Hopefully we'll put the new windows in, we can turn that around. Cause if you know me, I prefer physics over chemistry any day of the week. You know, the one thing that I've got to appreciate about a six sided screw, no matter how rusty it is, it always comes out. <laughs> That's crazy. I think there's probably about 50 screws I have to pull out here. That's gonna take more work than I like. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the window and then work from the inside with my knife to cut that out. Part of their system here, you'll notice at the top, there is no caulking. Down here, they started caulking. Not sure why, they only wanted a water seal here. Usually the worst storms come with wind. <laughs> Imagine that. Uh, hopefully there's not too much water damage inside the house. We gotta get through all that. Hopefully. I'm just kind of releasing it up around my, the screws. All right. All right, that's gonna work. Thank God these weren't Phillips. <laughs> Push through the goo. There we go. That screen isn't really doing anything for anybody. Either. Let's get that out of here too. If this is built properly, there's no chance this will fall on my head. It should have a two-sided putty seal all the way around that's been under compression for 40 years or more. Let's have a look. Okay. Next step, I gotta go to the inside. This will be easier to remove if I can cut through all this caulking. You know, looks like it's just silicone. 
Not my product of choice for exterior applications, but hey. Now we're gonna take the red bar. Instead of using this edge, it doesn't give you much leverage, I'm gonna use this one. And we're gonna put it in, we'll twist this way, which gives me almost an inch and a half of leverage. Ah, peeling that off the putty. Okay, we're gonna work that all the way around. There we go. There we go. And that's how you remove windows without breaking glass. It may seem fun like it is on TV, but the truth is, you start shattering your glass panes, you also have about an hour worth of cleanup for each one of these windows, and you create a very dangerous environment to work in. Here's the putty. Let's see how well that holds onto the window. Actually, not too bad. I create a pretty decent seal. You can see the wood here. There's no rot. Barely any water got in behind this at all over the last 45 years. Not a bad little system. <laughs> Gotta hand it to you. I was expecting a disaster. Hopefully the rest of the windows were installed with the same integrity and we don't have any surprises. So the actual dimensions on my window for my nailing flange are 55 and 32, which is a little bit more than what we have here which really isn't a problem as long as I can get my flange in behind this J trim. So I'm gonna have to clean out all of that silicone. That's gonna take another minute or two. Here we go. Nice and tight up against the siding of the house. You can see this particular product here. It's, a, uh, it's an exterior board that's got a waterproof surface. They just stapled it in place. And when the staples hit, it was a good product. And then they've installed vinyl siding over top of it so that this acts as a weatherproofing layer. It's actually a vapor and a rain wear, which is really good. I don't know if all mobile homes are built the same, but so far I'm liking what I see here. You know, interestingly, Lee, I wouldn't have a clue how to identify <laughs> if it was built this way without taking a window out. While we're at it, let's just take a good look at how this is built. This is the facade. This is just rain and diversion and UV protection. Here is another layer. Let's see if we can open this up. Yep, this is like a rain screen, okay? And it is finished. The different parts of the carport, actually, it's, this is the finished material. And behind that, we have this. This is the cool part. This is a hardboard with a foil face. Now, this acts as a deflection against the radiation of the sun. The whole building is wrapped in this. So, you can imagine, if this putty fails, <laughs> And this is funny, because this is a, a wavy corrugated product. If the putty fails and the water gets in behind that, hardboard is done, the framing is done. That's just, no wonder they had so many screws. All right, so I just want to make sure this is all nicely cleaned out so that I can get my new window nailing flange in between these two materials here. All right, which means I got lots of room. But because the facade, the siding is already in place, I've got to make sure that I got room to going to stick it in an angle, clean, and roll it all into place here. Uh, you might be saying, Jeff, why aren't you wearing gloves? Well, I work with a sharp knife, so it's not dangerous. But if I don't feel what I'm doing, that's dangerous. Here we go. Okay. Remember, one of the goals when you're working on a budget is to try to reuse as much of the material as you can. If you just go in here like an animal, you're going to destroy your J-trim, you're going to destroy your siding, you're going to destroy your weather barrier. And this, although it looks ugly right now, when it's all reinstated, it's going to be beautiful. And this is how we can upgrade something for just the cost of some materials and get another 50 years out of it. There we go. Now we're gonna tackle this thing on the top. Now I understand how they built it. I know they just laid it into like a huge thick tube of silicone. So the easy way to fix that is to just get through the window, extend my knife, get right up into that silicone, disengage it, and then we can clean it up. Yeah, this is why we love our Olfa knives. Got a nice big piece of blade in here. All right. Wow, that is just, 
Why is it so crunchy? <laughs> now, I'm not trying to save this piece. I just got to understand it. So let's get up here nice and tight. Have a good look. See what I'm saying? Look at all this big ridges of silicone. That is not silicone. They changed the material up here. Buggers. Once it starts peeling, we'll be able to have a lot more success. Come on, baby. There we go. See how that's working? The job here is to get this off without pulling off the J trim as well. There we go. Now we got it. That is a really thick piece of caulking, my goodness. There we go. Right? Now we can see what we're dealing with. There's no question who's going to win that battle. It's about being patient and don't use too much energy. Because if you slip, you slice. That's the rule, right? You slip, you slice. Okay. I just want to take my knife out now and clean this off so I have a nice, fresh new surface to work with. It can last over 100 years. Now, in a perfect world, my window, I would want my flange to be behind this. But because the entire house is built and I'm going backwards, I'm going to have to follow the original design. Go over top, use the putty, use the compression of the screws, and use a pile of caulking. And if absolutely necessary, you'll see how this is built. This piece of, of facade is independent of the rest of the wall. So if I need to, I can come back, reinstate a new J-trim, and I can buy a couple more pieces of siding. Because in the next video, we're going to show you how to paint your siding. So even if you get the wrong color, it doesn't matter. Now, one of the most amazing things about windows and mobile homes, <laughs> they're all the same size. There are very, very few unique sizes of windows. And so what I do is I go down to the local mobile home wholesale store, really. And in the area I am, there's two. So I've got competition going on, which is great. So here I've got a 30 by 53 window. It's got the tinted glass to protect the UV. It's a vinyl extrusion. It has a nailing flange and it comes in stock and there are about a hundred of them in that store. So all of the windows across the front are the same size. So I didn't have to custom order it. I just had to pick it up on the way to work today. Brilliant. Now we're going to see if this thing actually installs as easy as I'm hoping it does. Now worst case scenario, if I have to, I can peel off these facades and make this a lot easier. But I'm going to try to show you the replacement of a single window first. And that is, get that nailing flange here down. Now the inside is not as much of a concern because we can maneuver, we can manipulate, I can retrim the jam extension, right? So what I'm looking for here is, I think I want my window to go right tight up against this piece because that'll give me the best performance with the weather. The trick here, of course, is this window has to have, behind the nailing flange, has to have putty. So now I've got to be able to be comfortable enough to lift this up with the putty attached to the window and set it in place without having the putty being peeled off because I'm busy sliding things around. All right, so I'm gonna put this away for now. We're gonna finish the rest of the demolition, tear the rest of this out, and then we'll stick all these windows in on camera. <laughs> that ought to be fun. Okay, one more thing. The, uh, the windows came in two options. One was with that brick mold and the integrated nailing flange. And the other one, it came exactly like this with the aluminum extrusion, okay? So it doesn't really matter which one works better. If you go with the aluminum, it's the same thing. You put it right in the same hole, you screw in exactly the same place. Life is simple. With the brick mold, I'm, modern, I'm modernizing and updating my look. I actually have to find a way to get access to this nailing flange on my left side that'll be behind the J trim. And we're gonna show you how to do that in just a minute. So all the tips and tricks for installation come up first. I gotta finish tearing the rest of this apart. <laughs> oh, and a bit of warning. When you're doing a window job, make sure you make sure the window fits before you tear them all out. It's, it's one thing to have one hole in the house, it's another to tear out everything just to find out that you have the wrong size windows and you're starting from scratch. That is a mistake that a lot of people have made. Huh. Not a 
lot of strength back in behind there. That was a lot faster. This time, because I had access to the side, I was able to cut the caulking behind the edge of the frame. And so that made a much faster job out of this. Now we'll just rip this out. Okay. After a little bit of consideration, I realized it's gonna be easier to install these windows and then finish all the trims. Just like you would in new construction. This is just backer board of some such. All right, here we go. Always cocking, silicone everywhere. There's so many adhesives in silicones and they're all installed about 80% efficiency, which leaves you with massive problems. You can't keep 80% of the rain out and expect your house to stay dry, except maybe down here in Florida you can. I'm trying to figure out what's the benefit of sealing the siding to the weatherproofing system anyway. Like what did they hope that they were doing there? Is that cosmetic or is that they use it to hold it in place because it's not nailed on? It's only one nail on this piece of trim. No, there's one nail here. I think the rest of this silicone is strictly designed to hold this in place, which is fascinating really. When I put my window on, I don't need putty at the bottom, just the three sides. I'll stab it. Lean it forward. Compression. Hey, I can't have silicone here then. The more of this that I get rid of, the better. I think I'm gonna try sticking the first window in. I think I got the science right. The bottom of the window, I don't need a seal as badly as I do on the sides and the top. I'd like to get one, but it's gonna be very difficult. I'm feeling like the only way to do that is going to be to remove the top trim and the top piece of siding. I can get a, uh, a tape on a seal afterwards. That's after lunch. But before lunch happens, I want to get a couple of these windows back installed again. So let's start with this one. Here we go. Here's the technology. Uh, not that difficult. It's uh, just a slider. We're going to have this tape here, guys. This is the same putty that we saw peeling off the wall before. Okay. And it's got kind of like a self-adhesive quality to it. We're just going to lay it down. Here we go. Cut it off. And we're going to do the top and then two sides. And I'm not going to worry about the bottom because there's no way that I'm going to be able to get it in behind the existing facade of that building. I don't even know if it's going to be able to stick to this vinyl. You know what? I'm going to try pressing it in place and peeling this surface off. I've never worked with this before. That makes sense. Okay. So we're going to have to press this in place to get a bond. Remember, new vinyl is really smooth and shiny and doesn't adhere much. So these rolls come 30 feet roll, I think they said. OK, there we go. Not much to that. I'm also using these screws. I picked them up at the same store. They have everything you need. Number eight, 3 quarter inch is the head size. That's the standard machine screw size with a six-sided head for all of the assembly here. So that's gonna be really easy. And now we're just gonna peel the tape and set this in place right away. I'm having a problem with this process because now I have to trust the putty not to change position in order to do its job. I'm already having issues peeling this off. How in the world do you have confidence in a product that you can't see while it's being applied? I think at the end of the day, I'm gonna be just like everybody else. I'm gonna to try to use as much surface sealing as I can. I'm gonna be buying a piece of flashing to go over the top. We're gonna to definitely need some flashing. So here we go, guys, time to put the windows in. Remember, we're just using a level and a drill and have these tools handy. So once we get it in position, we don't have to go walking away and have the window fall out of the hole. 
we're gonna just roll it up. Now, the goal here is put the bottom in in such a way we're not engaging the putty till the very last second. Okay. Whoop. 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 Yep. Again. We're gonna try that one more time. Take it from the top. Yeah, here's what I'm gonna do though. This window is off balance. I mean, it's almost too obvious that I'm out of level here, isn't it? Yeah. I've got gap here. I don't have any gap over here. Hold the bubble in front of your face. Lift this side. It's not gonna work. <clears throat> That'll work. Boy, oh boy, I really gotta get in there. Okay. Working alone has always got its challenges. Eh? Now we're level. Now, just for good measure, just one other thing we wanna do. We wanna get a couple of screws up on the side, and then we wanna operate the function of the window and make sure that it's functioning properly, because that'll tell you a lot. Why is it not closing at the top? What's it coming in contact with? Top right, or yeah, your top right. My top left. Yeah, your top left is coming in contact with some caulking. Yeah, I, I just can't All right. get at it. I, I'll, I'm gonna come in, okay? Just, just stop for a second, let me take a look. So my window is level. In here, it looks nowhere near level. Mm. Holy cow. <sighs> the, the challenge that we're having here is Obviously, if things are just a little bit out of level, we get these major twists, like, that's not terrible. <laughs> it might be a little bit out, but it's not reflective of this. So we're definitely gonna have to rebuild the jams. There's so many layers outside that my screws are having a hard time penetrating and getting a good grab of the wood. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of this extra material here. We're gonna take, we're gonna get rid of it. Right from the trims, okay? We'll pry all this off, which is just sitting on nails. We'll expose the wood jam, then we'll install the windows, and then we'll have to cap it all again. Not the end of the world. Just an extra couple steps. But that way, it gives us a lot more control. That way I can set the window in place, and I can get it level properly without fussing around with the pre-existing conditions. All right, so I'm gonna go take these screws out, and we'll try it again. Yep, I got it. There goes all that putty. Figures, eh? Like I said, you got no control. Okay, Matt. There's another red bar in that bin if you want to grab one. Isn't this just the way it is, though? It's the way it's going to be. Look at this. Look at my nails. <laughs> it's always the smallest piece of trim that has the most nails. All right. There we go. Oh, shimming. Wow. Holy cow, and there's still a thousand nails in here. Well, you know, it's funny, but you don't want to use a big hammer in this scenario. You're going to have to swing it about a hundred times a window. Good luck with having any arm left at the end of the day. All right, here we go. Yeah, the window still is way off. That's just not going to help at all. Here's what I'm thinking, Matt. Let's adapt a little bit of a shimming technology here in the corners, okay? We'll put that, we'll try that window again. I'm starting to hate putty pads. This is the bottom. Oh, I didn't even putty the bottom. Look at this. So, We just need one successful window so that we can move forward here. This time, I'm gonna leave this sticking out and I'll pull it off later. That seems like it might even be wise. Well, hopefully it goes better this time. Um, I can't have the sticking out on my side. Thank you. I can't see the nailing flange. Can you talk to me? Yeah, can you go back your way a bit? Drop it. Yeah. There is no dropping it. I'm not on the outside yet. There we go. You're on the wood. OK, 
Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't want the I don't want the putty pad tight. How come the bottom corner isn't sticking in nice? Ah, it's probably that. How does that close the gap for you? Okay. What's the gap like on the left and right side on the side? Uh, no gap, half inch. Okay, well we got to split that. Okay, Matt, your your bottom right and your bottom and your bottom top right. right. Is a quarter up to a half at the top. Okay. And my, my left side. So your right is half at the bottom, quarter at the top. Okay, I'm gonna go a bit to the right. Close that gap, and I want to go your side clockwise. Stop there. How's the gaps look? Half inch on your right. Top to bottom? Yeah, half inch on your left. Okay, hold it right there. Let's see if we can get enough meat. I'm gonna push. Hopefully we can get the frame this time. Yeah, that have that definitely grabbed meat. I'm liking the gap. I'm coming in. Did that pull nice and tight down there in the bottom? Oh, like it. Yeah, I did too. Okay, all right. Ah, we got all scratched up on the old legs. Yeah, I'm liking that. Let's get this off. Matt, hang on. Give me some, give me some. There we go. Okay. Hold on. I didn't hit nothing there. Why is that? Can you put your fingers in the top track and pull that window forward? Yeah, that screw's not grabbing anything. I'm not sure why. Forget about the holes. We gotta go tighter. No. Did that grab? No. What are we going into here? What the hell am I missing? How is it I'm hitting wood on the bottom, but then I'm not? Okay, I'm gonna try that. Yep. Okay. No, there's just nothing there. Yeah. There's just nothing there. No. <laughs> like, come on, seriously? Okay. Well, I don't know if it's because the wood is rotted out or what, but that's just not grabbing there. All right, we're getting a nice grab over here. Yeah, that's getting a good grab there. We just have one spot in the wall. It might have been a two by four that has the edge carved out. Sometimes you just get lucky. Let's move on to the next one. All right, dry fit. <laughs> uh. Okay, Matt. <laughs> Can I get those shims in there? Get down. Okay. How are we doing there with the gaps? On your left, nothing to three quarters. That's what I thought. Can I get a double shim on the, that side then? All right, how is that for you? Okay, half all the way up on the right, nothing to half on the left. Don't worry about that. Can you hold that window for me? I want to step back and have a peek. Wow. How about the gap at the top? Uh, quarter from the right to half on the left. Oh, come on, you little pesky bugger. Can you just roll that around and then away from the wall so it's not bending? Wow, okay. That's gonna be problematic. Whew. I'm liking the gap more, but I'm out. I wanna double shim the left side too. And don't worry about the gaps. This bottom left corner is too low. I'm gonna screw the bottom corner and then we're gonna rotate this up a little bit. I'm gonna just cut my J trim and then I'm gonna use that as my, my top edge. All right, this time we're learning from our mistakes. We're going to, uh, we're gonna add a screw. I need to rotate this. Even though it looks really good. Remember everything with the siding was all done after the windows, okay, to build the suit. But since I wanna make things level, in order to do that, we discovered that we double shim this side, one shim over here. It's still not perfect. So in order to get it perfect, we have to Rotate clockwise. So we're gonna do that. Let's rotate it a little bit. That's good. Try the window, see if it operates. Smooth? Like a glove. Well, there's, that's our process then. Cool. I'm gonna take this off and then we can buddy pad the sucker. Like a glove, he says, eh? 
Now again, I can't see my flange. Guide me into the hole. Yep. Can't drop her down there. No, I'm, I'm not. Hang on, dude. I can't even really see. Her. Okay. There you go. On the shims? On the shims, yep. How's the gap? Let me hop to your left. Oh. Okay. You can't do that to me. Oh no. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm liking what I'm seeing out here. Okay, Matt, next window. So we're about to stick the last window in. What we've come to learn is this, as long as we have uh, open access on three sides, we can put the putty pad first. We can drop in the bottom. We can close it with good compression and have some control over that waterproofing. But in this situation, up against a finished wall behind the siding on two sides, I don't have the ability to maintain good quality control, I guess is the best way to say it, for the putty pad for the side because it's buried and we're shifting and we're rotating and we're it's just a bit of a mess so huh, unfortunately what we have to do is we do have to open up the siding and fix it all two reasons one is cosmetic um, you're gonna see once we put this window in like the other one it went from nice and tight to about three quarter of an inch gap that's unacceptable the verticals have to line up the trim above the box above this window it, it, it stopped in the wrong spot, like on the other side, my window would finish here, and I just have this huge gap. And we're not going through all this trouble to make it look pretty. I mean, the point here is curb appeal, right? So, we're going to get the window in, get closed, get weatherproof tonight, and then tomorrow we are going to go through the arduous task of taking off all the siding and the J-trims, reinstating them, adding flashing above the windows. We'll do the flashing right now, actually. And then we're going to go and source out some, some tape, some flashing tape so that we can seal these windows up old fashioned like. Uh, typical, whenever you're doing something you've never done before in a different part of the world with different building materials, you gotta learn the rules of the system that's being engaged. And right now, this is a different kind of window installation than anything I've ever seen in my life. I come from a four season climate up north. Now I'm in the south and so big surprise. I, I, I'm learning as I go, but that's fine. It's okay to learn as you go, but remember, just uninstall, realize, understand the system, think about the physics, think about the chemistry and the science, think about what's the intent of all the different components, know what they're doing, so that when you're putting it back, you, you don't just say, well, that's not gonna work, we won't use it. You have to replace a system with a new system, right? You have some integrity, and then if things are gonna look like garbage, they gotta fix that too. So, it's not always easy to replace something if it's been poorly installed. And so what we found today is we're not just popping in windows, we're rebuilding the whole facade of the front of the house. And that's okay, it's whatever it takes, because at the end of the day, when you do it yourself, you're always making money. So the more work that this requires of me, the better it's gonna look, the more money I make. And I don't really care, because I like making money. Cheers. Just standing here looking at the window, and this is the first one we did. Yeah, you could tell it wasn't level. Um, that's why for the second window, we started shimming the windows because we knew we were gonna have to lift this corner, okay? So now we're back here to fix this one. All right, Matt, you got some shims on you? I can grab them now. Wow. This one is, uh, is much closer. I'm gonna shorten up the top panel and then just readjust the, the J-trim to close the gap. Sure. And then I think the siding will still be long enough. That'll be good. The good news is, like I said earlier in the video, we are painting this entire house, so uh, we have to do a bit of patchwork quilt with the siding, that's not gonna hurt anybody. 
Oh, I got wood there, that's nice. And not my friends. Yes, I'm definitely allergic. Okay. To the point where I have an EpiPen in the truck. Hey. Okay. That is my cross to bear. <laughs> and for the record, I usually do work like this in uh, October in Canada, where it's like zero degrees and they aren't flying around. That's enough. Now, because of the lack of putty, we have to replace that waterproofing system, okay, with an exterior flashing tape. All right, so um, now that the building is closed up, I'm gonna clean up. Once I get my flashing across the top, I'm gonna show you that right now, then I'm gonna go shopping. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Flashing 101. There's like five of them here. Oh, Ibis. What are they called? Yeah, no. oh, if they have a curved bill, they're Ibis. If they have a straight bill, they're Cattle Eagle. They're a little curled, yeah. Yeah, those are Ibis. Okay, here we go. So here's my piece of flashing. The goal here was to find something at the store that I could use as flashing. The idea is to start above the window and then sit inside this U-channel of the window on the top, okay? That will direct water past this flange that could leak, all right? And I'm going to um, put the putty seal on the back of this, all right? And then use flashing tape as well, just for good measure. But because this is a heavy gauge metal, I think it's more like designed for east troughs. I'm just gonna pre-drill three locations for screws with a 1 8 drill bit. Oop. There we go. Now we're gonna take the putty. Why not? I already bought it. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it can hurt to have it. Okay. There we are. Sits right in here. Okay. Now. Obviously for this putty to work effectively, it needs more positive contact. And because this panel above is wavy, that's why I'm thinking of going with the flashing tape instead of trusting caulking. I really do like the physics that the tape provides you with a deflection and I don't have to fill it up with caulking and trust that I have 100% sealant. A 10% of a gap up there means a lot of water and heavy rain. So we are going to get the flashing tape out, seal that up, make a minor adjustment over here. There we go. So that's really it. We're going to put this across. It's going to be buried. It's going to be hidden so no one will ever see it. But um, I'll feel better knowing that it's up there. At least I'm moving any of the water that's going to come from behind this siding in and around the window and over top of the waterproofing beneath the siding. That's the idea. Always consider that. A, what's the water look like when it's just falling? A little bit of wind. What if there's heavy wind? What if the wind is driving straight at the building and it's under pressure? You know, you got to think through all the different cycles. Uh, in this case, we're in great shape. All right, here guys, just a quick explanation as to what it is that I'm struggling with here. Because I have this exterior board, which is the weatherproofing system, that's full of holes, I'm gonna add, okay? So that's not a good thing. I can't rely on the seal behind the nailing fin. So this is house wrap. And where I'm from up in Canada, or anywhere else where you have wood frame construction, this should go on the outside of your building and wrap it up, and it should be sealed to the nailing fins with this tape, okay? so. What I did is I went to the hardware store here and asking for flashing tape and nobody had a clue what I was talking about, which was amazing. So I had to wander the aisles until I finally found somebody who'd been in the trades, who was working there, and they walked me right over to the small little corner. <laughs> in Canada, we have this stuff by the box at the pro desk. Down here, there was only three rolls on one little stick. Anyway, I grabbed them all because I want to be able to rely on some physics here and not just chemistry. Now I know that the DuPont company makes amazing sealant tapes. So what I'm going to be doing here is taping the nailing flange plus the gaps where the screws are, okay? And you'll see that this stuff here is amazing. And it'll, just, it'll tape anything to anything, okay? 
There we go. That's what I mean by the word tuck tape. So if you're from the Florida area, there is no tuck tape at the store. You're going to have to get something like this in order to weatherproof this. Now, yes, we use the putty, but on these side windows, remember, they went in strange. We don't have any guarantee. I can't trust something that I can't see while I'm installing it. So the putty is hidden. And in this situation, I'm going to cover every one of these holes with a piece of tape just to make sure that any wind-driven rain doesn't get in behind there. And you might say, oh, Jeff, that's overkill. And let me tell you something. A little hole like this in a wind-driven storm can get enough water in there where it'll all collect from all these holes down at the base. Check this out. These organics, this is rotting happening in behind the wall, okay? We've got to stop that. If you can't keep your house dry, you can't keep your house free of bug infestations. And it doesn't have to be termites. It could be ants. It could be just about anything, all right? Um, bees, right? Like, like, it's crazy. They'll, they'll nest right inside your wall. And then one day you go to open a wall to do some repairs and <laughs> you get swarmed. That's no fun. So make sure you seal it all up. And then you can have a waterproof house. Ah, here we go. Metal to the building all the way down. This particular th situation here, the windows were 200 a piece, plus some miscellaneous screws, tape, the other flashings and the trims and a little bit of siding. So altogether, it's 1285 to do all of this work and have a brand new look on the house. That's pretty much it for putting in the windows. If you wanted to know uh, how to install the siding and the flashing, we've got all those details in another video. So I'm going to let you click the link over here and we will see you in that video and you'll be able to learn how to do all the siding systems the trims and the angles and the starts and the finishes, all my tips and tricks, so you can make the facade of your house look absolutely amazing. Cheers.